Hey, what is up, guys? This is Nishi from MST.TV here, back with another Market Watch episode. We're covering a couple of different cards today, including a few cards from Battles of Legend Monsters Revenge. There's a couple of things that I think are a bit undervalued with good potential to go up in price over time, so I wanted to talk to you guys about them for just a little bit. And then aside from that, there's a couple of other cards currently trending on the market still in the aftermath of the Remote Duel YCS and some meta developments in general, so we'll cover a few of those off as well. But guys, before we get started, just to remind you all, we do have our summer sale going on over at mstmerch.com. We discounted a bunch of our most popular products, including the white and black regular sleeves, the dividers, and our oversleeves as well. And we added some bundles for those of you who are wanting to purchase more than just one pack. Anyways, guys, let's jump into today's market watch. First up, we're looking at a card that I think all of you guys should know about, it is IP Mascarena. So despite coming out a couple of years ago, IP has maintained its reputation as one of the best generic Link 2 monsters in the game. Its effect is pretty simple, allowing you to Link Summon during your opponent's main phase using this card as a material, and also preventing a Link monster that used this card as a material from being destroyed by card effects. Of course, the simplest thing to do is to make this card into a Nightmare Unicorn on your opponent's turn to spin a card back to the opponent's deck, However, it can do other things depending on what you're playing. In some strategies, you can make Mech Knight Crusadia Avermax, which is almost impossible to destroy, or you can link with ABC pieces in order to trigger their effects during your opponent's turn as well. This is a card that has a history of being expensive. Despite only being an ultra rare, it was the most expensive card to come out of Chaos Impact aside from the Starlights, and its Megaton reprint didn't do too much to bring the price down for very long. It does have a couple of gold rare printings that did bring the price down a little bit. Those are relatively cheap, but the golds are much less nice than the much cleaner secret rares. However, IP wasn't short printed or anything like that in Battles of Legend, so right now you can grab them for between $2 to $3 a piece on TCG Player, which honestly feels really, really cheap. Now, given this card's price history and the fact that it is a waifu card, I think that at $2, I would be buying up as many copies of this card as possible. It's so generic and easy to use that most decks should be able to play it if they really wanted to, and it's actually a really nice looking printing of the card as well. Assuming that the card doesn't get some other random reprint in a random side set, I would expect this card to bounce back up to around $5 within the next few months, and I think it has the potential to go even higher than that if it starts to see even more meta usage. Up next, Super Polymerization is a card that I think everyone should have at least a few copies of. Super Poly is, in my opinion, one of the most broken cards in the entire game. You discard a card from hand to fuse with monsters from either player's side of the field, and this card can't be responded to. This card was at 1 for quite a while, but now it's at 3 and it doesn't seem like it's going to be going anywhere anytime soon. However, over time the targets for Super Poly have gotten better, and right now we have two really awesome, really generic Super Poly targets in Mud Dragon of the Swamp and Garura. Now back in tier format, this card was only good like sometimes, I think a lot of builds didn't use this. You could use it to go for game, but sometimes you'd be in an awkward spot where you can't really make anything without triggering your opponent's card effects too and it wasn't that great. Right now though, I don't think the card is anything really crazy either. I think that's why people are kind of sleeping on it and this most recent reprint. However, when Super Poly is good, it's really, really good. So much so that I think there's a lot of people calling for this card to be banned every time it pops up within the meta decks. One card that I do want to point out that just came out is Xtox Hydra. Even though you can only use your own monsters that were special summoned from the extra deck for materials, I think Xtox could be a really cool card to use in certain situations. If you can use your monsters to beat over your opponent's monsters, then Super Poly into an Xtox Hydra and attack your opponent directly. You get to draw two cards, and then you also have a level 4 body that you could then overlay or synchro with. I think that if Xtox Hydra had come out back in tier limit format, this card would have been crazy because you could Super Poly your own guys, trigger their effects, and then make a Dweller afterwards in the mirror match. To me, Secret Rare Super Polys at $3 each seems like such a steal. If you are able to grab a bunch of these at $2 each, I think that's a no-brainer pickup for me. The older printings of this card are mostly a bit more difficult to find, so I wouldn't mind those too much or how those would compete with this printing. The only one that I think is really concerning or would be a competition for this printing would be the Speed Duel Common and Secret Rare printings, but those are locked behind having to buy the entire box just to get one of those as well. If you can grab these here and there, 
For trades like when people are cracking open boxes of Monstrous Revenge at your locals, I think this is a really solid card to pick up gradually and just save for when the card is meta relevant once again. There's one other card I want to look at from Battles of Legend, and it is Tri-Edge Master. Tri-Edge Master is, I think, a really underrated new card from the set. I think a lot of people went really crazy for the reprints, the Quarter Century Secret Rares, and Assault Synchron that a lot of the other new cards are just being slept on, and none of them more than Tri-Edge Master. This is a generic level 6 Synchro monster that gets an additional effect based on the levels of the monsters you use to make it. If you used a level 1 and 5, you get to pop a card. If you used a 2 and 4, you get to draw a card. If it was 2 level 3s, you can treat this card as a tuner. And then if it was 3 or more monsters, you get all 3 of those different effects. So obviously it's going to depend on what deck you're playing and what levels your monsters are, but I feel like this card has the potential to be really amazing. Also, it basically replaces cards like Coral Dragon and Stardust Charge Warrior as being a bridge level 6 synchro. Not for every single deck, but for a lot of them this card is kind of an upgrade. Now price-wise, this card feels dirt cheap, which is why I'm bringing it up here. The Secret Rare is literally only like 50 cents, so if you can grab them for 25 cents or trade like a $5 card for 12 to 15 copies of this, I think that this is a card I'm going to end up picking up a bunch of and then leaving in a binder for a while because I think it has some really solid potential. Worth noting though is that the Quarter Century Secret Rare is already rebounding up. Obviously the Quarter Century Secret Rare cards were really expensive on release, but for a while Tri-Edge Master was the cheapest one, and when all of the prices came down, this one came down the hardest and it was down at around $25 to $27, but in just the last couple of days it has already rebounded back up to now $35 lowest on TCG Player. One of my buddies told me that this also might be because of Mana Diem. I'm not 100% sure on that, but it also might just be that the card is so generic and could be useful in the future. When it does, it will almost definitely shoot up in price. Alright, so we're on to looking at some more meta cards now. The first one is going to be the Bestial Lubellion. So there was a time that I think people really overlooked to this card. We didn't really see Bestials as being that viable of a strategy because everyone was just focused on the fact that Magnemut, Druizworm, and Serenir were hand traps that could be used to mess with tier limits. A few months later though, and everyone is just now realizing how crazy the Bestial Lubellion can be. Not only does it search for a bestial, but you can summon it out of the graveyard as well as place a branded continuous spell or trap from your deck to the field. So right now, this card is actually being used by two different decks, Branded and Dragonlink. Dragonlink took a ton of top spots at the Remote Duel YCS, while Branded is a popular deck that basically went through the last ban list almost completely untouched, and is a deck that you always have to respect with all of the different support that they've received. Right now, this card's price is pretty crazy. The Secret Rares are up at $70 to $75, which is around the price that it's been for the last while. This isn't too surprising. However, the Quarter Century Secret Rares have actually gone crazy. Right now, we're seeing a lot of the Quarter Century cards trending downwards as people are opening up more and more product and the market floods with cards. And these were down at around $200, $190 each. Now, however, the card has shot way up in price and is actually now between $280 and $300 on TCG Player, which is honestly kind of insane. Who would have thought that the Bestial Lubellion would be the most expensive quarter century secret rare to come out of the set? At any rate, this card should be reprinted in the 2023 Mega Tins since Darkwing Blast falls into that reprint range for the tins. However, expect the card to continue to be expensive over the next couple of months as we head towards Nationals and other events as one of the cards that will see a lot of play in several top tier strategies. The next card I want to talk about is Triple Tactics Thrust, a staple card that is seeing a lot of usage in the main and side deck right now. If your opponent used a monster effect at all this turn, you can set a normal spell or trap directly from your deck, which can't be used this turn, or if your opponent controls a monster, you can add it to your hand and then you could use it this turn. The really cool thing is that unlike with Triple Tactics Talent, it's not just during the main phase, so if your opponent drops a D shifter on you during the draw phase, you can still use Thrust to search for a card. The card fetches a lot of really cool and important things, including Feather Duster, Evenly Match, Lightning Storm, Change of Heart, or Daruma Karma Cannon. It grabs so many things, I think the card is kind of crazy because of what it can search and actually sort of justifies its current price point of $70 to $75. If we compare it to other staples from core sets like Pot of Prosperity and Lightning Storm at their respective peaks, I think that you could almost argue that Thrust is undervalued. This card shouldn't be included in the Megatins because it's from Photon Hypernova and that's a set after, 
Maybe this card gets reprinted in something like the Rarity Collection, but other than that it shouldn't be reprinted until the 2024 tins. If you are planning on playing competitive Yu-Gi-Oh over the next 6 months to a year though, this is actually a card that I would suggest picking up despite its relatively high price point, as more and more players are realizing just how impactful and strong the card can be. On to an interesting one, I guess we sort of talked about this card briefly before, it's Zodiac Chaconine. So the piece I've mentioned to you guys before that you guys should have picked up was Borbo, a Zodiac extra deck monster that can attack your opponent directly. The idea with the Zodiac package of two extra deck monsters is that you can access them with any two level 4s and then make a 4 material Zeus. Chaconine is the important one because it's the one that isn't banned that you can hard make with two level 4s, the other one obviously being Broad Bowl. This is a thing that Vanquish Soul has been doing for a while, but rank 4s are relatively common for players to look for, so if you had extra deck space you could possibly run this in almost anything. And yes, you do have an alternative in Heartland Draco, but Heartland Draco has to activate to be able to attack directly so it's vulnerable to something like a Ghost Ogre, and with that you would only be able to get 2 materials underneath Zeus, and being able to blow up the board twice is better than just once. Oddly enough, this card never got a reprint in the Mega Tins, so there was just its one original printing from Maximum Crisis. It did eventually get another printing as a Gold Bear. That printing honestly looks really ugly. It's only a dollar, but it really doesn't look that great. However, the only nice printing is the Ultra Rare. Those are anywhere from $10 to $15 on TCG Player right now. There's a lot of copies that are listed by unverified sellers or played copies, but the price has actually gotten kind of up there. I don't see Chakanine getting a reprint anytime soon, so if you guys do have any copies of the card at all, it might be a good card to bring to your local players if they're on Vanquish Soul. They don't mind, they already had to buy 7 different Ultra Rares from Wild Survivors anyways, so one piece shouldn't hurt their wallet that much more. One final card for us to look at here, it is Cyphrene Gear Epsilon. So I kind of missed this card from a couple of weeks ago, but Epsilon is basically the same thing as Gamma, but it negates trap cards instead. So I know that generally it's weird to think of how this card might be useful, the only traps that are really splashed into things are Imperm or Evenly Matched, and maybe the occasional Floodgate here and there, and then you have trap decks like Labyrinth and Trap Tricks of course. Well people are actually turning to Epsilon as a way to negate Eradicator Epidemic Virus after seeing how the card literally OTK'd a Kashtira player at German Nationals a couple of weeks ago. Sure, it is a very specific application of the card, but people I guess are now really worried about opening a handful of spells against Labyrinth and just losing all of their resources automatically. Epsilon is an old common card from High Speed Riders that only has the one printing, and because of this the card is now actually $5 per copy. This is kind of similar to like when we saw Delta get expensive, but rather than just being the next best potential option, this one has a specific application that people are looking to use it for. I guess we might see a point where people try to use like 1 Gamma and 2 Epsilon for certain matchups, who knows? But yeah, I do think that this card could possibly get a holo upgrade in an OTS tournament pack or something like that, but with such a specific application within the format, I don't think that the card is actually going to be seeing that much play, I think it's just an overreaction to the one event, so if you can I would probably try and offload your extra copies of Epsilon while people are still hyped for the card. Alright guys, that is all we have for today's episode. It has been really interesting to see the falling of the prices of Quarter Century Secret Rares. There's been some really crazy price dips, like with Water Enchantress for example, I think that thing was around 270 250 or something like that, and maybe it's now down to almost $50, $60. I think part of the problem was people were treating and pricing these Quarter Century Secret Rares like Starlight Rares, right, because of the way they look, but really the pricing should be more like a Collector's Rares because of the ratios that you can pull them at and the quantity of them that are actually finding their way onto the market. Anyways guys, if you did enjoy today's Market Watch episode, please make sure that you let me know by hitting that thumbs up button for me. Also make sure you leave a comment in the comment section down below, and of course, subscribe if you have not already, and until next time guys, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV.